This is the Comgro Z1 Pro, and it is at this point in time the most laser you can get for the least amount of money. So let's speed run the features, and then I'll show you my calculations of why I think this is the most cost-effective laser. We have a familiar looking 20 watt module, and again this is 455 nanometer wavelength. The height adjustment is one locking nut that is very easy to get access to. This laser pretty much came pre-assembled. There were just two screws to attach the controller. The controller is simple, one button, and an emergency stop. The Y-axis has dual motors either end. The Pro version comes with leg standoffs for extra height and gives us 150 mil or six inches of workable height. This machine comes with a familiar air assist pump, but unfortunately came with an inferior foreign plug. So I'll be using this six mil line from my compressor instead. My six mil compressor line fits the pushing connector on the laser nicely. The height is set using this metal block. And comes with a cute storage pocket. I can confirm that this machine can be controlled using a pad or a phone, using an OTG connector and the gerbil controller app. This is what the machine looks like on its maximum speed. The maximum speed is 12,000 millimeters per minute. So now we'll generate a cut test on light burn and we'll go from 60 to 100% power and from 100 to 300 millimeters per minute. The material is nine millimeter hardwood ply, which is the same that we've used on other machines so we can test the difference. So we have a respectable 200 millimeters per minute. Compared to the 30 watts that we've done, they reach about 250 millimeters per minute. And if we look at the back, the 20 watt isn't far off. Just like before, I'd like to cut some pallet wood. This is 13.2 millimeters. I'm gonna cut a disc at 2000 millimeters per minute. Let's see. Well, that is a very, very clean cut. Now, what I found using these lasers is 2,000 millimeters per minute is the optimum. And all you do is do several passes until you've got a clean cut all the way through. This was done in 17 passes. Now, that sounds like a lot, but it was one minute and 21 seconds. And my skills are not that good to get that precision on a bandsaw. Stainless steel. Tell you what, without air assist, it's very quiet. Right, those results are impressive. That circle is 3,000 millimeters per minute. This one is 5,000. And this circle here is 10,000 millimeters per minute. That 20 millimeter circle took one minute and 12 seconds. Let's try carbon steel. Without air assist, we've got 63 decibels. So it looks like it might have done something. Ooh, and that feels very warm. Let's see how well it's edged with some sandpaper. The etching isn't very deep. This was done at 500 millimeters per minute. Maybe 100 millimeters per minute would be a lot deeper. I don't think I'd want to risk any more in case the heat takes the temper out of my scissors. So as a bonus on this video, we're gonna install a light burn camera and a laser crosshair. These are really handy and you can use this on any laser system. But first, Comgro's got some more accessories for you. So let's see what's contained in these boxes. So first of all, we've got a decent sized extractor fan and a bit of ducting. Inside here, Got the fireproof cover, all the bits for the frame. Ooh, and a light bar, interesting. That is a very big cover. It measures 710 or 28 inches square by 510 millimeters or 20 inches high. And having a light inside does make a massive difference with these covers. So I've demonstrated this before, but these are completely fire retardant. That's because this is a silicon composite. So if you do have like a fire, you've got quite a boundary before it affects the rest of your workshop, which is very important. So I've been trying to rack my brains. Why so much height in here? I mean, it is roomy if you want to try and reach in and grab parts, that's for sure. But I also thought we could actually clip a camera to the top here. As long as it's a fisheye lens, you could get a really good view of the bed there. The camera I have, unfortunately, wants to be just a little bit higher. I also thought it makes quite a good grow tent if you're into that kind of thing. So I'm going to pack this cover away now, and as you've 
guessed, I'm gonna include this in the raffle. You can win this laser with this cover for just five pounds. So what I do is I raffle all the equipment that is given to me now, apart from just a select few, of course. So sometimes I do this for charity, but other times I do this to cover my costs so I can give you an honest review. So check out those links in the description and any discounts on this machine. Right, I'm gonna continue without the cover now for no other reason than it's better for filming. And I wanna stress the point that having a cover is extremely important with one of these. And that's for what should be an obvious reason that you want to extract all the toxic fumes and gases away and to prevent any glare from that laser. Because these are so powerful now, just the slightest mistake, you're blinded for life. This should be treated like a very dangerous power tool. You should be wearing the correct personal protective equipment, such as safety glasses, and make sure any other passerby isn't harmed by it either. So I've just done some tests on this three millimeter birch ply. And as you can see, it's actually quite a faff to get the positioning accurate. So let's cut out a bracket and install this laser crosshair. So I drafted this in CAD software, but you could actually create this on Lightburn. Right, let's check those results. There we are, those parts took one minute and 50 seconds. That was four passes at 2000 millimeters per minute. But anyway, these parts should fit together nicely. And that is with a zero kerf width. And the laser should fit through just like this. There we are, just like that. And now all I'm gonna do is add a bit of super glue to the joins. I found that these push fit joins basically create a capillary action to the glue. And what I'm also going to do is glue a bit of tape on the back facing the other way. Alright, so now I'll trim the excess off. And you can see I've already put a power adapter on it as well. All right, this is now ready to fit to the machine. Now I'm going to simply place it at the top of the laser here. Now you could obviously use sticky back tape or just glue it directly on if you wanted to. So this crosshair is only five volts, so this works off a USB adapter. So to set up the laser, first of all, we're going to engrave a small box. So there, if we push out of the way, now we've got something to reference to. So if I align that crosshair with that box, there we are, like so. Now on the side tab in Lightburn, we wanna click on the move option, and then we wanna click on fire. So what that's now done, if I move this out of the way, is it's given us a little dot where that test fire happened. And now what you wanna do is carefully measure the difference between that dot in both the X axis and the Y axis to where this square is. And now what you're gonna do is go on edit and drop down to device settings. That's gonna give you this menu here and you wanna enable laser offset. You then wanna put your measurements in the X axis that's going across and Y axis that's going away. So now if I realign that laser to that box, when we click go, that should be directly on top of it again. So mine's off just a little bit, just by one or two millimeters. Let's try just down here. Oh, need to go the other way. So after a bit of messing around, wherever you put that crosshair now, if I press play, you can see the crosshair goes directly back on the point of zero. This now means that setting up is a lot more easily. Let's say I want to square just here. Perfect, every time. So now we've got a laser on a laser, let's install the camera. This is just a cheap generic USB camera that I got off Amazon. Right, so those are finished now. I don't know what happened here though. Seems to have uh, drifted a little bit. All the other parts look good though, with nice clean cuts. Right, I'll glue this part together at least. What I've got now is a steel bar, and that basically inserts down here. There we are, like so, so I've just got to put a little bend in it around about here. So the supporting bracket at the back here is basically held on with T-nuts. These slot into the aluminium extrusion and then lock as they turn. I'm basically just gonna slot this in here. Center that like so. All right, now that's locked in place. This steel bar basically slots in there. 
There we go, that's fairly solid. So the camera is now installed, all we have to do is calibrate it. We're going to skip the calibration because it's tedious and we'll go straight to the benefits. One great ability of having a camera is its ability to trace shapes. If I place that there, and after updating the overlay, we can see the leaf on the page here. So if I now click on trace, that brings this window up. What I'll do is I'll just highlight the leaf there. That means I'm only going to trace what's within this box. Now what I'm doing is adjusting the threshold until that purple line is nice and even all the way around that leaf. And so now directly on top of that image, we've got a toolpath. So I can now save this as a DXF or PNG and send it to my CAD software. Or I can basically cut it out as it is. So I don't know about you, but I think that's amazing. So as you can imagine, using the camera, we can use that to nest parts and even remote operate the machine. And in the near future, what I'm going to do is create a full tutorial on using a CNC laser and light burn with all its features. I'm going to make it step by step and it should be really easy to follow. So if you want to see that, then make sure you're subscribed. Right then, why do I think this is the most cost effective laser and is there anything bad for me to say about this? Right, so there is a multitude of ways that we can judge the cost effectiveness of any machine. What I'm going to go by, however, is its ability to cut 9mm hardwood ply. This is what we've used for all the machines and so it's a good comparison. So what I'm going to do is judge performance by price. So currently the Z1 with the 20 watt module, not the pro version, that's not out yet, but will be when this video is released, is $670 or 600 British pounds. And because it's Prime Day, I think there are other discounts available, so do check it out. Right, so to cut this board, most of the lasers, apart from a couple, are cutting at a rate of 10 millimeters per one optical watt of power. So for example, 20 watts does 200 millimeters per minute. Now that's been the case for most of these lasers, except for the third 30 watt version. They've been cutting at 250 millimeters per minute. But the very best at cutting so far is the Xtool D1 40 watt module. That's been cutting at 500 millimeters per minute. So the D1 40 watt is operating at 12.5 millimeters per optical watt, whilst the 30 watt lasers are doing 8.33 millimeters per optical watt, which is a lot less. So what does that mean price wise? So if we take the 600 quid that this is worth by the 20 watts worth of optical power, we get 30 pounds per watt. So for example, some of the 30 watt lasers, they're roughly 1,500 quid. Well, they're 50 pounds per watt. The Xtool 40 watt is operating at 41 pounds 25 per watt. So if we go purely by the ability to cut this board, if we go 600 pounds divided by 200 millimeters per minute, we get three pounds. Let's just call that the cut value. We want that to be as minimal as possible. So currently, Comgrow is three. If we go for a 1,500 pound 30 watt laser, we have six. And if we go for the Xtool D1, which is 1,650 divided by 500 millimeters per minute, we get 3.3. So that to me is the simplest way of figuring out the value to performance ratio. But obviously it entirely depends on what you want to use it for. There is so much more that I can do with the Xtool D1 that I can't do with this machine. And when people have asked for my advice on using it for their business search, I've always been pointing towards the D1 so far. But you could use that same ratio to the CO2 machines and what you'll find is they're still not as cost effective. For example, I have the GWIC 50 watt CO2 laser in this workshop. Now that's a three grand machine. Now that performed exactly the same as the D140 watt, so it got a value rating of six pounds. And some of these CO2 lasers are a lot more money. So let's say you had three grand to spend, you could just buy five of these. But I look forward to hearing your thoughts on the matter in the comments section. All right, let's wrap this up with my final critique. There's a lot of of effort gone into making this block system. This metal holder is quite a lot of work. All the work that's gone into making this part just seems pointless to me. Especially when we've seen on all the other models are just a simple drop down mechanism that's held on by a magnet. They're literally just stamped out of a flat piece of stainless so I don't know why they've gone to the expense of doing all this when it's easily lost and just a faff. So for the money, I'm finding it hard to find anything wrong with this. The only major concern I have is how quiet the fan is. You're probably thinking, why am I worried about it being quiet? Well, if this fan isn't 
absolutely bellowing air through this nozzle, then it's not going to cool down those diodes very well, which means that the diodes will wear out a lot quicker if they're not being cooled properly. I have no problem this fan being roaring as long as it's delivering. What I do love though is that it's using off the shelf aluminium extrusions. This means if we want to upgrade the gantry, go a lot bigger, you can buy off the shelf and not have to go through a specific company. I've actually bought some aluminium extrusion to do that exact thing, except I'm going to do it with my plasma table. So if you found this video helpful at all, then please do drop a comment, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to check out the raffle if you want to win one. I've also put Amazon links for the Crosshair and the camera in the description. Right, so can I encourage you now not to watch YouTube anymore and to get out there in the real world and to forge for yourself a life that's worth living. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.